we still talk about, as in British people still talk about, this movement of Huguenots. Now, the Huguenots were a religious group. They are a religious group from France who moved from continental Europe to Great Britain. And just reading from the Wikipedia article, it says, London financed the emigration of many to England and its colonies around 1700. Some 40 to 50,000 settled in England, mostly in towns near the sea and in southern districts, with the largest concentration in London, where they constituted about 5% of the population in 1700. Okay, so should we be concerned that given that back then, the year 1700, 50,000 Huguenots, foreigners, moved from Europe to Great Britain, changing to some extent the culture of England at the time. But today, we don't have tens of thousands, rather we have hundreds of thousands. Are the numbers a concern? Now, we have certain people that say, open borders is the way to go. Certain people on my side of the ledger to some extent, who believe in minimal government. Now, there is a wrinkle in this idea that government has either very little place or perhaps even no place in determining who can come into a country. These are very minority views, that there should be no borders whatsoever. But let's consider exactly why a border is necessary. Once more, it comes down to the ideas, not the numbers. The numbers could be in their millions, numbers that perhaps Douglas would object to. I come back to the point that it can't just be numbers. What we're aiming to protect our societies from is not sheer numbers of foreign people. It is a certain kind of idea, anti-rational ideas, Ideas that refuse to allow themselves to be changed and indeed protect other bad ideas from being changed because they disable the critical faculties of their holders. This is what an anti-rational meme is. Anti-rational memes, for example, include something like, you must not criticise my God or anything my God has said in their holy book and if you do, we will kill you for it. Now, this kind of idea, which is well subscribed to by some people, or an idea similar to this, that if you desecrate, criticise, ridicule certain holy books, then the penalty for that is death. This has a chilling effect, not merely upon talking about that holy book, not merely upon talking about that God or that religion, but it causes people to be extremely concerned about talking about anything to, that might have any point of contact with that religion or with that holy book. And so anti-rational memes like this that say you must not criticise this thing also cause other people who might be fearful to not criticise a whole bunch of other things as well for fear they could make a mistake according to that religion, according to that set of anti-rational ideas. I'm not saying that all of religion consists of anti-rational ideas, not by a long shot. Much of religion instantiates important, inexplicit knowledge that helps to maintain a stable society over time, and in fact, in certain traditions, enables us to have a tradition of criticism. It also provides for that. That's a separate issue. But we must recognise that there do exist traditions out there that consist in large part at the present time, as they have in the past, of anti-rational memes. These are the ones that we want to protect our societies from. We want to protect our own minds from these things. We can't be perfectly successful at that. Everyone is walking around with anti-rational memes of their own making, of their education that they were brought up with. It is very difficult to identify them all. But because we know the dangers of anti-rational memes, they're the things that cause people personal pain in their own life. They're the things that cause damage to a society. They're the things that slow down progress in a society. We have enough of them already. We don't want to go importing even more of them. And so it isn't about the numbers of people. After all, we could have vast numbers of people coming from the United States to Great Britain or vice versa. There'd be very little cultural difference there. 
And as I said earlier, you can have vast numbers of people coming from Hong Kong, for example, to the United Kingdom. And it wouldn't be a danger to the United Kingdom. But can there be ideas that are a danger to the United Kingdom? Absolutely. Anyone who comes with the idea that the democratic institutions of the United Kingdom are evil and that should be torn down, replaced with a theocracy, say, then that idea is a danger. And anyone who holds that idea should not be permitted entry into the country. Now, that seems like a strong statement, but it has absolutely nothing to do with who the person is, what culture they're from. Nothing to do with that. It has to do with their personal ideas. They can change their ideas, but they need to change their ideas before they come into a tradition of criticism, into a culture which respects tr criticism. And if the more of those ideas that we have, individual instantiations of those ideas, people who hold those ideas, the more difficult it is to maintain that tradition of criticism and therefore to maintain the democratic institutions and to maintain the other institutions that enable us to remain stable despite rapid progress. And that's what we want, rapid progress. And any time we have vast numbers of people with bad ideas, we slow down the rate of progress.